okay so we have discussed uh that uh given uh, a topological space x topological topological space x right and any fixed point x in x right then uh, if we consider the loop classes whose base points uh, is at x right so this is x the x is point if we consider all the loop classes based at x then uh, with respect to uh, uh, product of uh, loop classes uh, that that is a group right and we denote it by this and it is called fundamental group of x it's called fundamental group of x at this now uh, why this small x is important uh, let us see right so uh, in fact in the next result we will see that uh, if uh, if your space capital x uh so given any two points so what about so question arises so we defined fundamental group using some point called small x right so what if, if we consider y here and we consider uh, loop classes uh, whose base points are y at y so then what about relation between this and this so next result says that if there exists a path between x and y then uh, there is a homo there is an isomorphism from here to here okay so in particular if your uh, space is path connected that right, that is given any two points there is a path joining them then uh, this mentioning this is uh, not important right because uh, fundamental group at any point in the space uh, is isomorphic to fundamental group at any other point right so let us see that right? <clears throat> so first define a <coughs> let x be a topological space and x not and x1 be any points in x let h x be a path in x such that h and h1 equal to x1 then define define a uh, beta h from this Uh, 
Now, uh, you define your map um, 1, x, 1, 2, 1, x, x naught by Vita H applied over a loop class. So Omega equal to H star Omega star H a uh, inverse star. Right? So some places it is up to you how you do not. So H inverse, some places it is written, uh, some places it is H bar, right? So this is the inverse part. So actually, this is not the inverse function, you would know, right? So some places that is why people write uh, just H bar, right? So H bar, H inverse or H bar, right? Is, uh, as I uh, said, this is just one minus T, H and one, one minus T. So basically this is not H inverse, so some that is why some places it is written just h bar, right? So I'm just using this same notation. So this is what uh, this is basically. Uh, so because uh, this uh, composition of uh, our product of path is associated, we have already seen. So we can write like this, right? Without putting any bracket. So this is uh, uh, you can see that this is a path class, all right, whose origin is uh, 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 x naught and end is x1. This is the path class. So for every omega in i1, x, x1, right? So this is well defined because uh, you can see that x, this is your x naught, x1. So suppose this is the path h, right? And suppose you have a omega path class, right? Whose representative is suppose this omega, right? So first you have started, uh, you have chosen a path class here, right? Based at x1. Then how will you uh, get? Uh, how will you get uh, define this mapping? This mapping is the uh, if you apply beta h on this path class omega, then you will get a path class. Sorry, loop class. Sorry, this is basically omega. This is loop class based at x1. So when you apply here, uh, we'll, you you should get a loop class based at x0. So you see here, this is what this is basically. This one, this is basically equal to class of H star omega star H inverse. This look class of this. And this is, this is what? H star omega. So first you have H, then omega. Suppose this is the direction. Then omega and then H inverse. This is a loop at X naught. And whatever its class, loop class is there, that is this beta H omega. Now, uh, proposition the map beta h from pi one x x one.
to pi one x x naught defined by beta h f is the put right there we we have written omega so uh, this equal to h star f star h inverse is is an isomorphism prism proof so first of all we have to show that uh, this is well defined so if <clears throat> so first we show that beta h is well defined by showing that for loops uh uh omega for loops f1 f2 bit base points with base points uh x1 and f1 homotopic to f2 uh, this beta h if f1 is homotopic to f2 then um, we should have that class of f1 equal to class of f2 but if class of f1 equal to f class of f2 then we should have beta h applied over class f1 equal to beta h applied over class f2 we should have this that is that is so this is what by definition this is this right this class that is h star f1 star h inverse is homotopic to h star f2 star h inverse Right, so we have to show this. Now, if one is homotopic to F two, so let F T uh, let capital F be the homotopy between F one and F two. Right? If F one and F two are homotopic, then uh, capital F uh, is a homotopy. Suppose it will be done. Uh, then, of course, we are talking about uh, 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 homotopy of paths. So uh, now uh, we will define a homotopy between these two uh, uh, loops. So of course, this this loop and this loop they are loops based at x naught. That we have already seen. Uh, now define. f prime uh, from i cross i x by uh, f prime t t prime equal to so we want to define a homotopy with b h Star f1 star f h inverse and h star f2 star f h inverse. <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, capital F. so your capital f is from i cross i to x such that 
capital F T zero equal to F one T and capital F T one equal to F two T. Okay. Now uh this is uh this you can write as uh H star So basically, uh, here let me draw some figures. So we can uh, in the first we can keep it this uh, H here, and then uh, we can uh, keep uh, complete this. Uh, F here and then H inverse in this one. All right. Now this is H uh, part P uh, uh, between zero and one upon four. Uh, we can put this. H four uh, p right so we have to speed means increase the speed by four times and then uh, we have to complete capital F in this portion so so basically this is half one upon four so one upon four and half so this interval we have to shift first so t goes to T minus one upon four. First T goes to one T minus one upon four. Then this is uh, we have to increase the length of uh, four times. So this is this goes to four times this. That is four P minus one. And then we have to apply this capital F. So this is four P minus one. T will be in ah. Uh, One upon four and half, and then then uh, we have to uh, this have h inverse. So h inverse will be uh, covered between this and this. So basically, uh, this. uh one upon two so this t goes to one upon two and one we have to shift t minus half then uh, we have to increase the uh, length so this goes to two t minus one and then uh, we have to apply h inverse so h inverse two t minus one right so uh Here, uh, we have h inverse two t minus one part t between half and one. Now you can see that uh, this is a uh, homotopy. 
uh, we've been uh, this uh, clearly F prime is a homotopy of e uh, between uh, this H star uh, this one uh, your F1 you just you put P prime equal to zero then uh, we'll see what what you are getting. Uh, it being this here, there is a problem here. Uh, so T prime. So this and H inverse and H star F two star H inverse. You can see from here that uh, you just take t prime equal to zero. Then you, we have here. This is of course uh, this when t prime is zero, then this is f uh, 4t minus one comma zero, and that will be uh, basically uh, f1 f1 4t minus one, and you will see that that is um, that will give you this one. A t prime equal to one, you will get this one. Right, so this will be a homotopy between them, and hence these two are homotopic. Now uh, we have proved that uh, this beta h is well defined. Now we will prove that beta h is a homomorphism. So far, F G in one one we have beta H F G right. This is what this is by definition. This is beta H F or G plus right. Again, use definition of this is definition of product of paths. So this is by definition of beta h. This is your h star f star g, right? Uh, and then star h inverse, right? Now this you can write. <clears throat> so we have seen that f is always um, uh, homotopic to uh, yeah so f is what basically f is a loop yeah loop at x1 so f will be uh, f always we can write homotopic to epsilon x1 right this product of this uh, constant loop at x1 and f right so this We can write it. So this is basically H star F star epsilon X one star G, right? So this breaker it is not required to prove breaker because of the associativity of the product of path classes. So we can write like this: uh, G star H inverse. Right. So we can just skip. So this is H star F star. So epsilon x one, the epsilon x one. This is homotopic to basically uh, <clears throat> H inverse star H. Right. So we can put that H inverse star H star G star H inverse, and this we can write as H star F star H inverse of H star G star H inverse, right? 
इसको दिस इज नथिंग बट बीटा एच एफ प्लस ऑफ एफ इनटू बीटा एच प्लस ऑफ बी एंड और बीटा एच इज ए होमोमार्फिज्म होमोमार्फिज्म तो बीटा एच इज वेल डिफाइन्ड बीटा एच इज होमोमार्फिज्म राइट <clears throat> now uh we have uh, we will show that beta is actually uh bijective so we have uh beta h beta h inverse right so we we can talk about this so this applied over some class f this is basically by definition this is your beta h uh, h inverse star f star so you can see that inverse of inverse h this is nothing but h so this is <coughs> h is now this is nothing but H star H inverse star F star H star H inverse. Now H H in so this H H inverse this is uh, homotopic to epsilon x naught F star. This is H H inverse again homotopic epsilon x naught. <coughs> right so this is basically here we have taken a uh, um, for every f belonging to on x this f we have taken as loop class uh, based at x not so this is basically a uh, loop class of f right that is that is identity of uh, pi 1 x x not Uh, similarly, beta h inverse beta h. <coughs> This is applied over. Yeah. So this was this was general element. This was general element from this. Ah, uh, hence. Ah, uh, beta h beta h inverse equal to identity pi one x ah uh, x not right similarly we have beta h inverse beta h Equal i pi one x x one, right? <clears throat> hence, hence beta h is invertible, invertible, and beta h inverse is nothing but beta inverse, right? So you have you know that if uh, you have a function f from x to y right and you can find a function y uh, g if if g is from y to x such that f compose g is ix and g uh, compose f is iy then f is invertible and g is inverse of f so same thing we have done here beta h is from Uh, pi one x x one to pi one x x not, and we have got beta h inverse from uh, uh, pi one x x not to pi one x x one uh, with these property. Uh, so we have hence beta h is an isomorphism. So this completes the proof of this proposition. 
ਕੀ ਕਾਫੀਆ